What time is it? How accurately can you answer that question? Well, if you are using not the position of a shadow, but at least standard wristwatch, then the answer is going to be quite accurate for everyday purposes. But what if you need to synchronize the rotation? Damn, that was boring. Now let's get straight to a very important question. How do you determine a second? And uh, the answer is quite obvious. Try to measure the whole day. Now divide it by 24, by 60, by 60 again. Here is your second. But it's not accurate enough. And what are you going to use to measure the whole day? Yeah, that is a question. And I've got the answer for you. The answer is 91926317170. That's how many transitions between energy levels of cesium-133 you're gonna need to determine a second. Okay, now here is a short explanation of how an atomic clock works. Natural oscillations of atoms are used to measure time intervals in atomic clocks. First of all, atoms have to be heated in an oven and bundled into a beam. Each atom has two possible energy states. Let's call them states A and B for now. Magnet 1 is used to remove atoms in unwanted state. In this example, it is state B. Now we are left with atoms in state A only, which are going to proceed further through a resonator, where they are subjected to microwave radiation, which triggers some of the atoms to change to state B. Some of the atoms that are still in state A after the resonator then will be removed by a second magnetic field. The detector then counts all the atoms that have changed to state B. The percentage of these atoms depends on the frequency of microwave radiation. The more it is in sync with the inherent oscillation frequency of the atoms, the more atoms change their state. Research is being conducted nowadays to replace microwave radiation with light rays, which resonance frequency is about 50,000 times higher than that of a microwave radiation, allowing for a more precise measurement. That is much more accurate than just measuring the day and dividing it by 24 and 63 times. Yeah, that's better. Especially if you need to synchronize several satellites in order to pinpoint a location of a moving object, like GPS works or GLONASS or any other bullshit, this planet. Here is another interesting question. Can you go backwards in time? And the answer is entropy. Entropy is not gonna let you. See, entropy is a measure of how disorderly things are. Take a TNT, put it into a building, blow it up, and here is entropy in action. I'm kidding, do not do it, but the example still stands. And entropy can only increase. That's why you cannot travel back in time. Time can roll only forward. There is no way to turn it around. At least I don't know how to do it. Hope nobody knows. But can time go slower or faster? And actually, yes. Very near a black hole, very close. Your time is going to be a bit slower than mine if you're here safe on Earth. And if you are traveling at a speed nearer to the speed of light, then your time is gonna be slower, once again, than mine. Nobody cares that we cannot reach a black hole or travel at the speed of light. We just know these things for some reason. Uh, 